Today I present to you an amusement park that was so fun it killed people. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Spring is just around the corner and you know what that means, Link? Flowers. Amusement park time and flowers. There's gonna be flowers too. People are gonna be going to music parks. Maybe you go during the winter. I don't know what kind of people you are, but if you want to avoid the lines going in, the, in the, the spring. But chances are you're gonna go to a place that you're gonna walk out of uninjured, right? It's gonna be unlikely that you will be injured Boo. or killed. But that wasn't the case uh, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Of with course. a little place called Action Park. There's nothing in the world like Action Park. Now, some of you may have heard of this because uh, there's quite a few web videos about this and there's a really good uh, short documentary Okay. Uh, all about Action Park back from 2013. Link in the description. In the description? In the description. All right. Uh, but you can go watch that. You can also watch this. Uh, this was an amusement park located in Vernon, New Jersey, opened up in 1978. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Noah, uh, who's not here today, but that's where he'd be if he was here. Yep. I'm pointing at Stevie, who is here. Uh, he went to this park and he knew about it and hipped us to the scene, yes. right? Thank or you, you. Thank you, Noah, uh, for alerting us to the existence of Action Park. And Link, He went to this place. Here, here's, here's a little taste of what Action Park was like from the commercial. Now, I love, uh, that. love that song. First, first observation, catchy song. Second observation, yeah. no one died in the promotional video. It, yeah, it looks like just a good old fun time. I bring my kids out there, right? I didn't see anyone bleeding or dying. Well, it looks like fun, and you know what? It's really fun, but it's also uh, the most dangerous amusement park in the world. <laughs> Officially. Uh, or, uh, you know, one of them. Okay. okay. This all started uh, back in 78 with the owner, Gene Mulvihill. Now, it was his philosophy of what amusement parks should be that led to what Action Park was. What's his philosophy? He thought that you should be in control. You know how like when you go to Disney World, it's just like- You're driving a car. You and the guy next to you, you're both gonna experience the same thing, right? Like you're driving a car, but the steering wheel- You're not wheel, really driving it. Like you just, hey, take your hand off the wheel and it's just like thunk. At Action Park, thunk. you controlled the speed, you controlled whether or not you stayed on the ride or not, okay? okay. Well, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and his philosophy was he would hire you if you had a good idea for a ride. You didn't have to have a physics background, <laughs> engineering background. He's like, good idea, son. And Build it. That led to things like this. What? <laughs> Dude, there's somebody coming out of that. <laughs> it's not Photoshopped, man. How, what do you mean Photoshopped? Just they, a video. Or it's not effects. They made that thing. How fast do you have to be going to do an actual loop-to-loop -loop on a water slide? Water there's, slide. There's no water that... It's not about the water pressure, it's about you and your weight. But look, hold on, you might think, hold on, that looks dangerous. I've been on some of those water slides that are just real steep and... I think, no, here's what's happening in that. I want a clear tube because what's happening is there's dead bodies piling up inside of this thing and then they're just putting other people coming out dropping the other one out. Here's what happened. It's an okay. illusion. They opened this up in the summer of 1985 and before the ride was opened, Gene paid employees $100 each to volunteer to go down it. <laughs> to test it. Now, after a lot of head, head injuries and nosebleeds later, they decided, hey, let's open this thing up to the public. <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. Really? A couple of things happened. There were more bloody noses, more head injuries, and then one rider reportedly got stuck stuck at the top of the loop. Yeah. And so they had to build a hatch to rescue people if you got stuck at the top of the loop. I'm not making this up. It was open for one month, and this is this, something Just send happened. someone else through a little heavier to like push them Just kind of push through. them up. It's like Drano, human Drano. <laughs> the advisory board on carnival amusement ride safety, which I'm glad that exists, <laughs> shut this thing down after one month. Oh, wow, but good. There was more. How many people are still in there today? Uh, well, you just hold on for the end. Okay, another ride was the Alpine Slide. Now, I've actually seen a ride like this before, never been on one, but this is essentially this concrete track and you're in oh, yeah. this mm -hmm. sled and you've got this brake, right? You can slow yourself down a little bit, but you're in a concrete like loose a thing. A ditch, concrete right? ditch. Oh, wow. So you may have seen one of these before. They actually have these, uh, they have one of these in California. 
The problem at Action Park was the carts didn't work right. And so they had two speeds, really, really slow or no brakes. And what would happen is they would put somebody on the track who was going really, really slow. Get frustrated. And then they would let somebody with no brakes go. Oh, after them. <laughs> yes. And just run into the back of them. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that it was impossible we to call control it the yourself. Rear ender. You can't steer. And so people would come off of this with huge burns all over their bodies. Uh. And this actually led to the first death at Action Park. A 19 year old employee and his cart flew off the tracks and he suffered a hand, head injury and died. And then according to state records in 1984 and 1985, the Alpine slide produced 14 fractures and 26 head injuries. Sounds like fun to me, but it gets more fun. In the tidal wave pool, otherwise known as the grave pool. Ooh. Now this is, you, you've been in one of those wave pools at like uh, Emerald Point, you know, Emerald, Emerald Point, oh, Greensboro, yeah. North Carolina. There's like a and then the wave Stevie starts coming. Stevie knows about that, yeah. Well, they're sending a wave. They, these were some of the first guys to do a wave pool and they hadn't really figured it out yet and they were a little too intense. And so there's two things that happen in a wave pool. Number one is waves. Uh, Check. Number two is it's not salt water so you're not as buoyant as you typically would be out in the ocean wow. and people don't estimate things right and the waves were too hmm. big. And so what ended up happening is people would be over there holding on to the ladders for their dear lives. Like 30, 40 people crowded around these ladders Three people died on this ride. Oh goodness. Three people died on the wave pool. And they just left <clears> them <throat> in there? <clears throat> no, they, they got them out. They had 12 lifeguards, all teenagers by the way. They had people working there at the park as young as 14 years old, ride operators as young as 14 years old. Here, here's can what, you sign your name? You can work here. Here's some of the things that stacked up here, okay? There were more rides that had led to more injuries, including fractured femurs, collarbones and noses, dislocated knees and shoulders. So many people were taken to the emergency room from Action Park that the actual park bought extra ambulances for the township of Vernon to keep up with the volume. Okay, so there've been a total of six deaths, which is a lot of deaths for oh, operating dude. for about 20 years, okay? Yeah, I mean, they better be cutting their annual pass. If In 1982, two people died a week apart. Uh, Who's the, going the week after that, you know? Who's going that, the third week? Thousands of people went, continued to go. It was incredibly popular. They had to set up their own insurance company in the Cayman Islands in order to insure <laughs> themselves because really? nobody would. Gene the businessman. And right? then things got so crazy that they lost the insurance policy that they had made for themselves and they operated a year without insurance. Then they went bankrupt because there's just too much to handle, too many legal problems. Mm -hmm. And they uh, closed in 1996. But you, you, when, you see, when you watch the documentary that we'll link to, you'll see people wow. love this thing and you gotta think about it. You're in, you're in, it Chances it, it, are you're, you're not gonna die. Chances are you're not gonna die and that's what makes it but super fun. Chances are someone is but and people, I'm gonna be here for that. People absolutely love this. If given the chance to go into the loop-de-loop, -loop, wouldn't you do it? If I could go right now and do it, would you do it? Give me some time to really think about this, no. What if I give you until 2016 when they're bringing it back? What? That's right, Link. In 2014, Action Park reopened. The owner's son is in charge now and he says- Gene Jr.? He's bringing it all back, all, bringing all of the thrills back and none of the spills. So it probably won't be as fun as the original Action Park, but they just announced in March 2015, they're bringing back the Cannonball Loop successor. They're calling it the Sky Caliber and it, it will be open in the summer of 2016 and you've got to promise me that you're gonna go there with me. Oh my goodness, what? It's a 45, 45 foot, foot fall. free fall. And then a 30 a loop? foot loop, but it's what? a little bit different. You gotta ride in this thing. A coffin. They put you, <laughs> they put you in a water coffin. <laughs> that guy looks strap scared. you in. Oh wow. Are you ready? Buy the plane tickets. I'll drive up there. I'll give you $100 to go down first. We can take a scooter <laughs> to New Jersey. Yeah, I'll be on the front of the scooter and you be on the front of the the. the I think modern side. day water parks and theme parks could learn something from Action Park, uh, how to have more fun. Speaking of learning, thanks to our sponsor, lynda.com, who'll teach you how to learn some stuff. You wanna shoot better photos with your DSLR and learn how to develop your own mobile app or edit videos with Final Cut Pro or Premiere? lynda.com has what you need. Learn at your own pace with thousands of different videos. Go to lynda.com slash retinlink for a free 10 day trial. Thanks for liking and commenting. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Rhiannon. And, and we're, we're from Perth, Western Australia. Australia. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. 
Don't let us have all the fun drinking out of these good mythical morning mugs. Get your own at redling.com slash store. Oh, I just drank out of it. Oh, you you should too. A different one. Or mine if you It here. makes stuff taste better. Like through the good mythical morning. Not Mar- really. I didn't go to Action Park, but I did something uh, action-packed off-roading I gotta tell you guys about, including you. I might need to apologize. Forced analogy, riding a bike is like swimming in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, riding a bike is a lot like swimming in the ocean. Right, because of the wheels. You got two wheels, and you gotta keep it balanced, and you gotta oil your chain. And then... Just like the ocean. And don't forget about the moon factoring in. And your horn, don't forget about horns. Like I said, I haven't been to Action Park, but uh, as we've shared many times, Rhett and Link, Rhett and Link, Rhett and I. I'm Rhett, he's Link, <laughs> welcome to the show. I just spoke to myself in third person.